Scott. Let's go with our first question there to Greg Hunter. Chad, we've talked a lot to everybody else about the new coordinators. Um, you're facing well, one as well on their side. So when you watch what Indiana did, similar to what uh, Penn State does, or are you going to face an entirely different scheme? Oh, similar to uh, what Penn State does as far as how they line up. Obviously, personnel is a lot different. But uh, very similar to what we, uh, how they line up. We've been playing, paying a lot more attention to Penn State's personnel because of the similarities. What do you think of their personnel? Talented. Got great overall team speed and talented from top to bottom. Really good up front. I was going to say, Neil mentioned, um, very familiar with a lot of those players, probably a lot of text <clears throat> messages that either were answered quickly or home <laughs> visits that were, you know, so you're familiar with a lot of these guys who are recruiting, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Very familiar. So we know how talented they are and, you know, and kind of players they are and, you know, and what they mean to that football team. Any kids that were close that you can recall? Uh, not on the offensive side of the ball for, as far as for, for us. Yeah. Yeah. Defensively, Garrett mentioned two ends, 33 and 11. And they're guys you've got to pay attention to. Yeah. And then their Mike Linebacker is a guy that mm -hmm. – are, are we missing anybody? That Those are the guys here. Those two defensive ends make them go. Uh, they do a phenomenal job timing up the snap, getting great ball get off, trying to be disruptive. Uh, the linebacker, uh, Kobe King, mm -hmm. four to one, is a really good football player. Does a phenomenal job versus the run and in the pass. Plus, all those guys got experience and, you know, uh, not, not necessarily just experience playing, but experience playing with one another. So they got good chemistry. And, and, and uh, so, you know, we got a great respect for what they can do. It's going to be a big game atmosphere, obviously. Um, how do you use that to your advantage, but also not use it too much and get overhyped the whole thing? How, how do you balance that? Well, you know, for our guys, you know, we had an opportunity to go play in their they atmosphere last year. And it wasn't, the moment wasn't too big for our guys. And so being at home, it's it's going it's a great thing for us, you know. I you know with our crowd and how loud we'll be, uh, I don't think it'll affect us uh, one bit at home. I hope they're so loud they can't they, the other team can't hear what they're saying. Uh, be great for us. Kind of a fine line though, because um, <laughs> defensively you you want them to play with as much emotion and passion and energy, but offensively you've got to execute. You've got um, assignments. You've got things you do. So you got to kind of tamp it down a little bit, right? With your guys, as far as offense, guys. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're approaching a different. Than uh, Jordan is. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, uh, we've had uh, our last couple of scrimmage. We've had say several scrimmages, and we that we weren't as good coming at least to start in a couple of scrimmages. In the last two scrimmages we had, I thought our guys came out ready to play on the first drive, and and they brought a lot more energy uh, to it, and so. Uh, you know, for our guys, I think we just got to come out. We're an energetic football team. Uh, the quarterback's an energetic, high-confidence guy. And that's what makes them go. And, and so we need them to come out and play with that kind of energy. Obviously, got to, you know, we can't get too high, can't get too low. But we, we got to come out with some kind of energy. I mean, it's an interesting dynamic because your quarterback is, that's his nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got to play with poise, too. So uh, do, you, do you talk to him at all? Or do you just say, Garrett, be Garrett? Be Garrett. Garrett, be Garrett. And that's just for us, period. We got to be who we are. You know, uh, offensively, we got to be who we are. He got to be who he is. And us coaches understand that. Now, he he's matured over the past year, and he's grown a lot. So, you know, he has a, you know, respectful understanding of what, he's, what he can do and what he can't do and, you know, how he should be and how he should not be. So, we, but otherwise, we just let him be him. You say you got to be who you are. Who, who are you as an offense? What, 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 what is your – when well, first we start, we, we we start up front with the with the uh, with the offensive line. I mean, we're a physical, tough football team that's going to run the football and, and go use the run action to, to set up shots down the football field and allow our quarterback to do a phenomenal job seeing it and and, and making throws and extending football plays. That's who we are. Oh, is the opening game different than other games? I mean. Obviously, obviously, it is since there's no history. Well, it's because it's, 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 it's the first game, yeah. You know, it's because of the first game. Oh, this is a big game uh, for us. They're all a big game for us. But, you know, I wouldn't say it's any – we prepare the same way regardless of who the opponent is. 
Uh, obviously, you got a lot more time to prepare for an opponent, so that's what makes it different. You got a lot more time than you normally have within the game week to prepare for them. And, and sometimes that's a good and bad thing. Sometimes you can see too much and work on too much and feel like you could do too much, put in too much, install too much. And, and now you got guys out there thinking instead of reacting. So, but as far as like uh, it being different, not necessarily from a mentality standpoint, just the fact that we got more time to prepare for them. You go into this, obviously, you've spent a lot of time studying them, working on things at work, work through camp, spend time. Is it now a process of, okay, don't add more, but take away some of the things that maybe you thought were good that don't look good? Is that how it goes? 100%. That's exactly that's exact where we are right now. And it's also about uh, doing the things that we're good at, too. You know, we've had a, we had a great camp. I want to say since I've been here, this is the, the best camp we've had. Offensively, been the most consistent we've had. Uh, it's been the most available we've had. And when I say available, I'm talking about the players. You know, we've done it. The guys done a phenomenal job taking care of their body, staying healthy. And because of that consistency and that chemistry of playing with one another day in and day out, it's allowed us to have the best camp we've had since we've been here. So it is more about at this point right now taking away things so the guys can go out there and play and not overload them. But it's also about just doing what we're good at, you know, regardless of what we're going to see. If we just do and execute what we, we're we good at, what our guys are good at, what we're comfortable with. Maybe a manifestation of having older guys and more experienced players, maybe? Absolutely, 100%. Yep, yeah. yep. And, that, and, and that's testament, again, like the guys been available throughout camp. The experience we have uh, playing with one another, but also like throughout camp, you know, like the quarterbacks and the whole line, those guys are, you know, they're throwing the ball to, you know, the guys they're going to throw the ball to, you know, developing that chemistry. They're handing the ball out to the guys they're going to hand the ball off to, the offensive line are, you know, they're playing alongside guys that are going to play alongside. And that's huge. You know, sometimes you go through camp and you got injuries where guys are out and you're not necessarily throwing or handing the ball out to the guys you're going to play with on Saturday. And we've had been fortunate, knock on wood, to stay healthy throughout camp to do that. With the uh, Yates at the center, are there things defenses can do to try and take advantage of? He's not inexperienced, just, you know, he's new at center, newish. Are there things like putting a guy right over top of him or? or Anything, you know, force them to make more calls? Or are there things defenses can do that way? Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably, uh, you know, some late snap counts, you know, with, with, with noises, whatnot, since he's not, you know, had a lot of, uh, you know, experience playing it in game wise. He's had some, but not a lot, you know. So, you know, simulating play calls, barking calls. So we got to do a phenomenal job pre preparing him for that. As far as lining up in front of him, I mean, he's one of the strongest guys on the football team. So that shouldn't be an issue for him. But, uh, I would say simulating uh, snap counts. Schematically, they're four or three, though, right? So not going to be anybody over top of them, at least initially. Right, right. at least until third down. Until yeah. third down. Yeah. yeah. Looking at Penn State and the uh, scheme that they run with that four-two-five, and they're going to use that uh, kind of. It sounds like the sphere of what the Mountaineer defense does, but call yeah. the line like that safety linebacker hybrid. Right. Does that kind of help having that here with the spear? And it does. Prepare you know, we prepare. Them? It absolutely does. You know, because it's a it's a bigger body. Uh, they put it that position, and you know, something that we we face and we see every day. Uh, so it does help helps us, uh, you know, prepare for those guys. Hey, Chad, when you're getting ready for a coordinator, a defensive coordinator you haven't seen. Mm -hmm. Where do you start? Is it is it a player? Is it a Philosophy. But for us, we just started with, to be honest with you, we started with personnel. We want our guys to be able to see those Penn State football, see their defense. Uh, but, you know, when you start, you know, you, you know, obviously we don't know a lot of, you know, a lot too much about what they're going to do. We, 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 we think we know. But uh, obviously look at the scheme. And, you know, once you see the scheme and the similarities of the scheme, then you just start to, you know, let your guys look at who they're going to face. You know, we need our guys to see more who they're going up against personnel-wise. Neil for scripting or play calling, how quickly in your head are you thinking, oh man, we got an edge here, or oh, we should stay away from this, or this play would work here? Yeah, well, again, just go back to just being a, doing what we're good at. When you don't, when you go into a game where you don't necessarily know, you know, as much as you typically would if the, you know, if the coordinators were in place, you got to do the things that you know you're good at uh, and be ready to make adjustments early in the game, you know, if you see anything different. Tablets on the sideline, especially for, for running backs. How do you use them? I mean, you see some of the other positions. What, what do you do with them and the running backs? For me, confirm what I already see. I don't know if you guys see me on the sideline, but I'm so far ahead of everybody. And I, you know, I like to try to see the back of the defense so I can see exactly what's going on. I like to see the game, 
the way I game planned with those guys and prepared them for it. So I got immediate feedback for them as soon as they come off the field. So for me, and we did a great job of this, uh, this fall camp throughout the scrimmages, having the tablets on the sideline. But for me, with my experience was, and with those guys, was just confirming the things that I saw and, and that they can see it and, and we can get it fixed. But that's going to be a, that's a big addition, more so for the guys. They can actually see themselves, good or bad, what's happening immediately after the uh, series. Mentioned but about the four two five or the schematic there with the hybrid guy with the Luke, I guess. If you go back to TCU, is it similar to what Patterson did in that scheme? Uh, Bud Foster, he used to run a four two five. Is there anything you can think back to that you faced during your years here? Or yeah, I would say uh, how it fits schematically with somebody you faced. I would I would say TCU or uh, 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 yeah very similar to TCU probably uh, you know Bud Foster more so in terms of the pressure they right. high pressure team uh, not gonna lie not just gonna allow you to sit back there and, and right. pick them apart they gonna they gonna provide some pressure so more Bud Foster in terms Sticking of pressure back to that, um, if I remember correctly it was about you know trying to stay away from uh, a long yardage third down try to get what you can get and yeah. if you take those four or five yard hits. Take them and be happy with it. Absolutely, well, similar for us, man. This and this, is what we've always talked about. First of all, we got to be disciplined. We got to limit the penalties. We got to stay out of long down and distance plays. We can't start drives with first and fifteen. Uh, so we got to be disciplined ourselves and and do a phenomenal job of you know not having you know penalties, whatnot. And we got to take care of the football. We cannot have any negative runs. Uh, who, regardless who's carrying the football, we got to guys got to give have a vertical mentality and, and go north. You say first downs is important. Is third down maybe in this? Absolutely, case? we got to, first down is very, very important. We got to get out to a good start. Got to be efficient with the football, and and then we need to get like we need to get in manageable third downs, uh -huh. and put ourselves in position to execute it or make a tough call on fourth down, what not to go for it.